Think about a time when you searched for something online and all of a sudden everywhere you looked, you're getting followed around by ads for that thing. For me, it was collagen supplements. A friend asked me if there was anything behind these collagen claims for skin and gut health. So I did some searches and all of a sudden my feed was taken over by smooth skin influencers touting collagen smoothies. These are the algorithms at work. And there's a major disconnect between what's amplified by algorithms and scientific credibility. Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. The reality is that these algorithms are dictating what content is getting presented to us. Which video is up next on YouTube? Which TikToks populate your feed? Or which ads crop up on Facebook? We're constantly training these algorithms based on what we click, what we search, and what posts we linger on for longer. These algorithms are motivated to increase your engagement. And what increases engagement? Controversy, strong emotions, aspiration. Seeing similar content presented over and over makes it feel like these claims are well established. But here's the thing, there isn't necessarily any connection between what my algorithm presents to me and scientific credibility. Scientific papers go through a rigorous process of peer review before getting published. Though this process isn't perfect, this vetting by qualified experts in the field ensures certain standards of credibility and is quite a contrast to the factors driving social media amplification. This can make social media a pretty murky place for seeking out credible and trustworthy nutrition information. So what can we do about this? Along with a team of collaborators from the Tufts Clinical and Translational Science Institute and the Museum of Science in Boston, we have co-created 10 tips to help you navigate nutrition information online. Tip number one, watch out for the word cause or proven. It's quite rare in nutrition science to unequivocally prove that eating a certain food, nutrient, or diet causes or prevents a certain disease. Compared to other types of medical research, where it's much easier to compare a drug to an identical looking control pill while keeping everything else the same, nutrition is just more complicated. That's because when you change one nutrient in a diet, it usually changes other nutrients too. It's really hard to blind participants to diet changes, and some health outcomes like cancer take way too long to develop to feasibly run a trial, so we also incorporate observational evidence. Plus, there's lots of variability in how people respond to dietary changes based on their genetics, behavior, and even the microbes in their gut. So yeah, nutrition is complicated, but we can still look at the overall picture to get a sense of the relationship. Seeing statements with the word cause or proven in nutrition can be a red flag that makes your science spidey sense tingle. Tip number two, be skeptical of cure all claims. Similarly, it's just really rare that one food or diet can meaningfully impact many diseases. While there are some underlying factors that are shared between health conditions, like high blood sugar, increasing risk of diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, the reality is that there's a complex interplay of mechanisms linked to disease development. One food is unlikely to benefit them all. Tip number three, take note of fear-mongering language. Think language like toxic. I've been seeing a lot of harmful fear-mongering language around fruits and vegetables, with claims that only organic produce is healthy because conventional produce is contaminated with toxic pesticides. The best available evidence we have supports that eating more fruits and vegetables of any kind is beneficial for health. So in my opinion, these claims cause unnecessary food fear and could shift towards displacing fruits and vegetables with other less healthy foods. Tip number four, are they trying to sell you something? Let's face it, we live in a capitalist world. Influencers are powerful and social media platforms are funded by advertisers. 
recognize that evidence may be presented in a biased way when a goal is selling. So take note of subtle or not so subtle purchasing calls to action. Tip number five, be wary of extremely restrictive diets. There can be lots of problems with extremely restrictive diets that tell you to completely eliminate certain foods or entire food groups. They're really hard to stick with in the long term, can lead to inadequate intake of important nutrients, worsen some health metrics, and may distort your relationship with food. Case in point, juice cleanses. Although they often yield rapid weight loss, it's not a sustainable way to eat in the long haul. Strong evidence supports that humans can thrive on quite a wide range of dietary patterns, and that greater diversity of plant foods in particular is associated with better health. Tip number six, consider whether the evidence relies solely on anecdotes. In science, we often say that anecdote is not evidence, but humans are storytellers. One person's experience may be meaningful for them, but it doesn't tell us the whole picture like a well-designed research study can. So when looking at before and after pics of someone's nutrition tweak, remember that there may be many factors that changed in their life. Consider whether this shift is sustainable in the long term, and recognize that there may be both positive and negative health impacts. What you'd really like to know is whether there are consistently health benefits when many people follow it. Which leads us to tip number seven. Are there references to credible scientific research? Linking to research studies can help support claims with scientific evidence. Well-designed studies that randomly assign participants to different diets for a period of time and then measure what happens, or ask large groups of people about what they eat and then follow their health status for many years can shed light on the relationship between nutrition and health. But a note of caution, just because you see a study cited doesn't mean that you can automatically trust the claims. There's some nuance in what kind of conclusions you can draw from different types of studies. If you want to nerd out on study design, check out my hierarchy of evidence video series. Plus, it's important to consider who funded the research, since studies funded by companies may have interest in biased interpretations. Tip number eight. If research is referenced, who or what were the subjects of those experiments? Cells? Animals? Humans? Remember those collagen supplements? When I dug into it, most of the studies were feeding mega doses of collagen to hairless rodents exposed to super intense sunlight. It's tough to say that those findings are comparable to a sunscreen wearing human adding collagen to their smoothie, hoping that it doesn't get digested in their stomach acid and automatically goes to the wrinkles in their skin. While human studies are generally better for supporting claims, it's still important to consider how similar those humans are to you. For example, if a study was performed in participants who all had a certain disease, but you don't have that disease, then it's unlikely that the results would apply to you. Tip number nine, who is the messenger and can you identify several indicators of their credibility? Some possible indicators of credibility are professional degrees, like registered dietitians, PhDs, or MDs, or reputable organizations, such as .orgs or .govs. Though it's important to emphasize that credibility doesn't hinge on just one single factor like a professional designation, because there's a fair share of folks with letters behind their name promoting pseudoscientific claims. Instead, use these 10 tips like a constellation to guide your evaluation. Tip number 10. If it sounds too good to be true, it might be. Make sure to consider several indicators of credibility to decide. My goal with this video is to bring some awareness to the algorithms that dictate what you see when engaging online, and to empower you with some tools to help navigate that information. Let me know in the comments about your experience using these tips. That's what science tastes like. Thank you to the Tufts Clinical and Translational Science Institute and the Museum of Science in Boston for sponsoring this video. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition. Thank you.